Thank you very much. Today, this is the topic that have been given in your agenda. But I would like to rephrase it a bit for us to be able to connect with the topic. What I'm asking you is to connect yourself with the topic. And that is why it's the same thing. But I'm going to call it now leading a culture of innovation in the new digital world. There are very few things, key words in there. One is the word leading. Leading. Leadership is about influence and impact. It's not about your title. You may have a very beautiful title, but if you don't influence and create impact, you are not a leader. Are you okay? So I would like you to, that one first thing I would like you to see. The other one is the word culture. I'm going to touch into that a bit. And the other one is the word innovation. Culture, I'm going to speak. But before I go into the culture of innovation, please give me just two to three minutes to explain about innovation. Please understand this. Innovation. Um, because AI is technology. So although I'm not going to say much about AI today, everything that I do say here is applicable to how we leverage AI, how we build AI, how we use it. So take, well, feel free to take some of those things I will say with you for the next couple of days and challenge yourself and the others. And on that note of challenging, I will be challenging you by the end of my talk. I will be asking you some questions about yourself and how you look at the world in your third rule. When I get to that, you will know. Uh, and then we will have some interesting discussions, I'm hoping. So that's, that's normal. Churches have gone online. Meetings, this explosion of AI. Why did AI explode so much now? My personal observation is that 2020 after COVID hit, we all went full steam online, we were on Teams meeting, Zoom meeting. If I told you in 2019, let's go down to a, a Zoom meeting, you'd have looked at me. A, a Zoom what? A lot of people, maybe not in this room. A Zoom what? But now it's no more. So through all that masses of data, because all these AI systems work mostly on data, masses of data, our voices are online. Our voices have been record, re recorded. So AI now has got a lot of data that it can use. And if you coach it and you teach it, it can come up with very valuable products, um, products, um, products for you. And probably most of us, there's some sort of fortune uh, compared to some other peoples as well. So if you have a veil of ignorance, you actually say, I'm ignoring, because I'm actually looking at, I'm not judging, I'm looking at people from a veil of ignorance and, and I'm making um, decisions, I've got a justice thinking based on that and I think it's that's an important skill to have I think as, as humans um, because only then and only then we can think about justice ethics laws regulations policies and procedures fairly it's so easy for us to be biased so 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 that's a, a really I think it's a good input I do reference that in the book Africa has not made any of these operating systems and they can be accorded for them to participate into massive, massive surveillance programs. There lies the issue of ethics, and that is why we need ethics in technology. But having laws, again, is not enough. I know that most of the regulators and policy makers are happy to say, we've got a law for this, we've got a law for that. It's really not enough. It's the same with having policies. A lot of companies have got very good policies. If you read them, my God, you think they are secure. Yeah. And uh, believe me, one of the biggest issues that we've experienced as lecturers in the academia, especially after the, you know, uh, the coming of AI, is a very serious thing. You know, students are inquisitive. The time you stand in, you stand in, you know, uh, in front of the class, start presenting, they'll be busy on phones consulting chat GPT. And they would want to prove the lecturer wrong. You give something, you raise the hands, no, sir, no, but according to the way I know, this is the way things are supposed to be. But it's not actually the way they know. It's actually what AI. 
tells them to do. But the fact is that you're using this technology called certificates. Yeah? And it's just a, depending on how you're using it. The third version of verification is one that actually is configurable. And I, I always like to use you know, physical military as, a, as an example because we've been doing this for thousands of years. You know, if you want to know how to do security well, just look how we've been doing it for the last thousands of years. This is not something new, right? Verification is part of the physical security of, uh, of any military organization. You don't just let anybody walk into the military base. There is a process of verification, right? And that's exactly what happens in the digital world. And one of those verifications is that the requirement to verify is done then and there. So in a physical world, in the physical uh, security, we're checking to see, well, Dale, does he actually work for the organization, yes or no? We I do believe you need to know about nefarious AI. So what do I mean when I say this? So ladies, we all know, when we look at social media, we all want those IG photos, right? And the TikToks, and the... But let me tell you what happens. Is there's actual AI that is created? that is a social engineering technique or even just an influencer. So you look, at a, you look at a video, you look at a photo of this woman or this guy that's in this amazing place, right here by the Z And they start posting every day and you follow them because you believe they're an influencer and you wanna be just like them. But guess what? In the background, it's actually an AI generated image. Timeliness, efficiency, continuous improvement, resilience, introspection, I like that. Collaboration, look at how amazing that is. Collaboration is standing out, innovation, shared vision, and you know what? I was not even needed to be here because we all know what it means to embrace the values that will move us forward with an Agile mindset. Agile revolves around people. This is what we call a social contract. So when you're building an Agile team, and I want to be very specific here, I know it has an inclination on IT, but Agile teams can be built for any purpose. And the first thing that we want to do is to allow people to create their own set of values, shared vision, and that shatters collaboration, which then births innovation. So this is what you call a social contract. The next uh, area has been the interpretation of documents. So it's something, you know, intelligent document processing has been around for a good number of years. Um, obviously leverages a number of AI capabilities, so there's OCR and uh, computer vision, natural language processing, fuzzy logic, etc. But the truly exciting bit that we have now with generative AI uh, enabling document automation is that that allows us to also interpret unstructured data. So this is where we can have documents being processed on the fly in the contact center for instance but also you know once the document it, it's not just uh, for interpreting the document it can also assist at the far end it can assist that contact center agent to then formulate a response back to the customer. So think of the context of there's a finding and that contact center person needs to send a email back to a customer. Generative AI can help to formulate that response back to the customer. Technology is actually here. We're actually in the age of AI and in the age of abundance. Well, now we're beginning to see these technologies begin to find themselves in our day-to-day -day lives. If you look at reason, reason is why you now get data and begin to make sense out of it. Uh, ChatGPT gave us an idea of how advanced these technologies are. 
But I think when we went through the discussions today, we also, also we saw that ChatGPT has got a terminal limit of 2022. Anything after 2022 is, can be used. Secondly, ChatGPT has got this habit of hallucinating. And at the gates of that institution, we find a book. I call it the honesty book. And you have to fill it, fill in your names, phone number. How many of us? How many of us are coming from institutions that do that? One, two, three. All right. So that honesty book. How many of us are honest enough to put our details in that? All right. And so do we ever, does it ever cross our minds? I know there's probably a, a, a policy in place for people to fill, fill out at the gate, okay, especially for sensitive institutions. But does it ever cross your mind where this information ends up? Does it ever cross your mind? It does. Eh? And how many of us have received an SMS telling us about someone who's selling gold? Um, uh, innovation uh, is, is, is something that we all have to, to harness, right? It's yeah. an important mindset that has to, to govern our approaches as we go forward. And, and, and where, where, where better else to start, yeah. right, than right here yes. uh, with our very own yes. and exploring uh, uh, what uh, new elements of innovation are out there and available for us. Mm. And, and AI is, 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 is amazing. I think it's the future. Yes, right? it is. It's going to impact uh, everybody mm. uh, and uh, across different uh, aspects of our lives. So uh, even as we think of the business, where mm. the businesses will be tomorrow, where we'll be tomorrow ourselves, mm. uh, we have to start embracing uh, yes. what that picture looks like with AI being a very prominent part of it. Absolutely. I think one of the important reasons we are here is because we are looking at AI and how it's shaping everyone's lives. Yes. Uh, we have noticed that uh, AI is a very prominent issue that has come to table mm. and we should embrace it. Yes, it cannot we, be ignored. We cannot push it back, it's yeah. here to stay. Mm. And. It's not taking our jobs. Mm -hmm. People are afraid that it will take our jobs and uh, are just in denial of it. Mm. Um, I think we should find ways and means to work with it. Mm. How could we bring value? How do we enhance people's lives mm. with this AI? That's right. I think coming from a reinsurance background, we we think of AI as a tool yeah. that will help us bring a lot of value to our clients. Absolutely. Um, looking at the financial services uh, provider or the sector that I'm in, obviously we don't work 24-7, yeah. but we expect that the technologies that we have implemented should continue servicing our customers. Yes. Our customers do travel abroad, mm. different time zones, so what are we saying? Mm. If Christabel is back home, it's 5 p.m., she has to go back home. Mm. My customer is in a different region where they're transacting, it's day like there. Yes. So what kind of technologies have we put in place that we ensure that even in the absence of a human being, mm. the service will continue being provided, the efficiency mm. and output is top notch. So for me, that has really stood out and uh, definitely looking at um, industry and sector implementation mm. for some of these recommendations that have come through the speakers. So mm. that has really stood out for me Wonderful. because efficiency is just the way to go. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Please enjoy the rest of the <laughs> Thank subject. you. I intend to thank you so much. Pleasure. Great. Okay. <laughs>